under, where do y'all see 27? Um, the only reason I did that is because I changed color to 10. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I don't recognize this 27. Um, and I got pictures coming. Uh, you couldn't make way to show you a picture first or second. First off, when we start, there, there's nothing even remotely like a mitochondria in your other in your cells. The ribosomes, uh, ribosomes, lysosomes, peroxisomes, they're all kind of alike. But these bad boys here, they they are so unique we had to wonder where they came from. We have a unique theory that I buy into, and, uh, and I don't believe in everything evolution says, I'll be honest with you. Personally, I don't think my uncle is, my monk is a monkey. My uncle's a you know, I don't think that. But there's some folks who are full-fledged right down the line, evolutionists. And I, I mix it up. Because my mama is a creationist, and we have some debates. And she thinks everything that's on the earth now was created back in the beginning. I don't think that. I think some things have evolved from things that were created. For the AIDS virus, and I said, Mama, AIDS ain't been here since around 1980. There's no cases of AIDS before 1980. So, so that right there, he went and created back in, in, the, in the Genesis of the Bible. She can't explain that to me. Yeah, well, maybe it wasn't deadly. I said, no, AIDS is deadly, Mom. So I wouldn't deadly. I said, now, chances are, what I think, Mom, is this. There was a virus created back in the beginning, and he's evolved. And now he is AIDS. Like, like we grew up, right? And we changed as we grew up. I don't know if she's ever going to agree with, with my take. And there are some folks... I had a freshman in college, and we all, yeah, he got mad at me. I got mad right back at him. Because he flat out told me that your ancestors are a monkey. And I said, hell it is. I'm going to kick out of school. I, 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 got, I got too emotional. I, I need, you always need to be prepared to back off, let your mind take over, and let your emotions. And, and I made a mistake. I was, I thought I said, but um, I never did agree that. He says, well, well, look at this Bobby coming I mean, Bobby trying to get it. And I, I admit, if you look at the blood of us and the blood of a chimpanzee, it's almost identical. He said, that proves that our ancestors were, were chimpanzees. I said, no, it doesn't. It just proves the Creator had the same plan for both of us. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna invent something and you're gonna use peanut butter in it, and then you're gonna invent something else, it's, how do you use peanut butter again? Does that prove that one thing evolved from peanut butter? No, it doesn't to me. So, I don't like to teach evolution. I don't like to teach creation. When I get to Sunday school class, I tell them right off, don't even go there to me. I've been on my bonds. I want to try to get me worked up. I have my own way of thinking, and I'm satisfied with it. And if, if, if you have a disagreement, I have no problem with that at all. As long as you can support what your thoughts are. You know, as long as you can tell me a reason why you think, you might change my mind, but rarely. When you have, I went one time to the debate on evolution versus creation. You know, no one's minds are changed. They just got mad at each other. And when you, you walk out, feel the same way you when you walk in. That's, that to me is not a debate, that's an argument. But anyway, I'm going to move ahead and show you my picture. Uh, anything that needs a lot of energy will have tons of mitochondria because they produce energy. Your muscles need a lot of energy. They have tons of mitochondria. So the brain cells, I say it on there, nerve cells? Well, nerve cells also have a lot of mitochondria because of their activities. But, but muscle cells probably have more mitochondria per square inch than any other cell in the body because they have such a demand for energy. Now this is the pictures these are pictures taken through not one of our scopes. That's through the electron scope. You can't get one that big through one of our scopes. That's the special device. And all those things are mitochondria. So how come you figure one is round and one is long? It's the way it's cut. It's the way it's cut. I mean, the best example is to you like a magic marker. 
and those folks soon. This is the shape of this is the shape of mitochondria. This way, what shape is? That way, what shape is? See, that's how it works. It just like shit. It's just how the cut is made. Now, notice all these folds inside here. The folds. It's on the surface of those folds. Now they're called crystae. Is that word? I saw it. Is that word called crystae? That's what those folds are called. All the energy you need is manufactured on those folds. And the more folds you have, the more energy you can produce. And these, if you look carefully, uh, right here. Can y'all see the double membrane right there? Okay. The theory is, and I, I don't have a problem with this one. The theory is that way back a long time ago, there was a cell. And this cell had no mitochondria. And then there's a bacterium that had the ability to make energy. But he had no place to live. Bacteria need an area that's dark and warm and moist. So the bacteria invaded this cell, but didn't kill the cell. And found out that this is a good place to live. I think I'll live right here inside this cell and make my energy. Well, the cell says kind of, well, you can live here as long as you share and need your energy making. I want some energy making. I'll provide you a place to live if you give me some energy. And that's how we think it all started. And here's why we think that. The mitochondria, the DNA in the mitochondria is not like the DNA in the cell. Totally different. Totally different. That would support the idea that, that the mitochondria used to be a bacteria living on its own and got inside the cell. And he's still there today in our cells. But we don't call them the we call them mitochondria. No other organelle in that cell has different DNA. They all got the same as this, except that's the mitochondria. The same thing, if you're a plant, the same thing is true for chloroplast. A chloroplast has totally different DNA than the plant. And we think the same thing happened to the plant. Some bacterium got inside there, and this bacterium had the ability to make food. And so the plant says, hey, you can live here. Well, you make me some food too. And that's why we think that the mitochondria and the chloroplast used to be free living cells that got inside this bigger cell and didn't kill the bigger cell and the bigger cell didn't kill it. And now they're, they're neighbors. They live together, squatters' rights. Um, and if you look carefully, this is the best one. This membrane right here, that's the cell membrane of the cell he got inside of it. And then this membrane right here, that's the old membrane of the, of the bacteria itself. So if you, if you got inside me and I surrounded you, wouldn't one of your membranes be me? And the other be you? Nothing has that. That sucker. You know the membrane is a two-layer affair, right? He's got a double two-layer affair. One of the two layer affairs was his original cell membrane that he had outside here. Now he got inside me and I, I surrounded him with my cell membrane. So what he had, he has his cell membrane and mine too. There's nothing like a mitochondria. Nothing. And that's why I always, and I still wonder, I don't know this to this day. When that cell starts to divide, say, I need to make, uh, I'm too big now, I'm too fat, I want, I want to buy myself in half and make two little cells and they keep going. Who tells the mitochondria to make more of your cells for the new cell? I don't know that. I don't know how he gets the word. All the other, all the other organelles, they're programmed for the nucleus and the nucleus can talk to them. But if there's, say, there's, there's 40 mitochondria in this cell. Let's say it takes 40 to keep the cell alive. If he's going to divide, those 40 got to double, don't they? To make 80, 40 for the new cell. And I don't to this day know how that mitochondria gets the word. Because if you had half the cell, and 20 went here and 20 went there, we suspect that's not enough to keep the cell alive. 
So somehow that mitochondria gets the word that, oh, make more of your cells, we're about to divide ourselves in half, and I want enough in my two cells to keep us going. So they, they coordinate, but um, the theory, that's the best theory that we have that explains why the DNA and the mitochondria is so unlike the DNA in the cell it lives in. It's because the mitochondria, and I think it used to be a bacteria. They got inside there and just lived. And the cell didn't mind it as long as it was making energy. And, and the cell provides the ATP, the ingredients. I mean, all you need is ATP and phosphorus. And you combine them. So the cell says, here, here's the ATP, here's the phosphorus. You make your energy, and you combine them and give it back to me. And I can <coughs> it. It works beautifully. That is a symbiotic relationship. Now, mistletoe, the, you know the oak trees and mistletoe? That for Christmas is real popular. Mm -hmm. That's a parasite. It will kill that limb out this way. It is. It is. It is getting a benefit at the expense of the tree it lives in, and it will kill that oak tree eventually. Uh, when I was in college, I used to take my 22 rifle and shoot the mistletoe down and go sell it. <laughs> Back then, in that North Georgia town, that was a big deal, and all I do is. I had fun shooting. No, I just shoot it there and I wasn't that good. It might take 50 bullets to get one off, but it worked. So there's your mitochondria and there's nothing, nothing like a mitochondria. And the word mitochondria means four or five or six. Mitochondrion, it's just one. Okay? Centrio, <coughs> they only work one time and that's when the cell divides. And they sit there dormant and do nothing until it goes to divide again. And then they get busy. <coughs> so Centrio, and I got a picture of them, they're always at right angles. You'll, you'll see them like this. They're never like railroad track. They're never like, they're always, <coughs> always pointing to each other. They're never in there like that. Don't know why. Don't know why. They just never are parallel. They're always, we call that right angles, right? When you have a 90 degree turn, well, I, I call it cross in the teeth. Well, that's how they're arranged. And, um, of course, now, neuron, you do know nerve cells can't heal, right? They can't make new, when the nerve cells dead, they have no centrio. For you to make another nerve cell, you must have a centrio. Nerve cells don't have, neurons are nerve cells. That's why nerves, when you're born, you got all the brain cells you're ever going to have, so take care of them. You can't make new ones. <laughs> you cannot make new ones. Don't have centrioles. And that's why if you have a stroke, you always <coughs> don't get any better at all. That's where you, you're locked right there. That's a picture of a drawing, and this is the real thing for the scope. Now let me show you what you're looking at here. These, these fibers always set to three. You see three? three? You see three right there? And three right there? And three right there? Like a little fan in the way they whirl? And this one is running like this in the picture. Alright? This one right here, uh oh, wrong way. This one right here looks like this to y'all. And so does that one. And this one looks like this to y'all. And there's two of them. There's one this way, there's one that way. As you see right there. They always fit right in. And never going to see two of them looking like this side by side. That'd be parallel, wouldn't it? Never going to see that. Now the next picture shows you another view of it. This is showing you one looking like this as you look at it. And this one why can't you see the whole thing in that one book? Why can't you see the whole thing? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a rod, right? So when you cut it, you just get to see the top of it. Where's all this at? Well, it's deeper in the tissue. I didn't cut it there. Well, I cut it this way. I cut it with one of them, right? If I cut it this way, all I get is the edge and that edge. There's two edges. And that's how we know that's what that is. And there's another picture of one. Um, 
I see some going this way, but basically, when you cut it, I see this, and I see this. This part, I didn't hit with my knife, did I? He's inside there. Same thing right there. That gives you the fact that they're always arranged like this. That's the right angles that, that I'm trying to get across to you. Um, this is the, this is the um, artist drawing, and that's the real deal. This is, I would call this a transverse section, and this a longitudinal section. This is a transverse section cut across, and this is a longitudinal section. When they make a banana split, they cut banana crossways or lengthways? No. Well, they do a longitudinal section. But if you make banana pudding, how do you cut it? Cross so to make banana pudding and you cut another round wafers, you, you do a cross sections. If you make a banana split and you cut it lengthways, you do a longitudinal section. So you, that's how you cut these things the same way. The cytoskeleton is the bones inside the inside the cell. They made a they made a filaments and tubules. Uh, but they hold the cell up, they give the cell the shape. I mean a nerve cell looks nothing like a heart cell because these things make sure it maintains its own shape. I mean, if you saw the silhouette of a dog and that of a bear, could you tell which is which? Yeah. Just a silhouette, now just this black outline. Could you tell which is which? Yeah. Y'all got four legs. Y'all walk like that. How would you, what would you be looking at and tell one the other one? Well, maybe there's a, I shrink it down the same size. The bear ain't bigger now. The bear is the same size. Just, I shrink it. I make them both equal. What things would you look at? The palm. Yeah. The tail, one thing. You see a long little tail on the bear? Mm -hmm. How about the face of the head of the bear? You see a long snap? Mm -hmm. You got a snap, but not long. Bears are more like flat faced. Dogs are more like this, right? It's the bones. Even the tail. Has, it's the bones that give away the shape, and these things right here, the filaments give away the shape of these cells. Okay? Um, the protein that you find in, in this, in the filament, is actin, it's not the myosin. In a muscle cell, there's two proteins, actin and myosin work together to make a muscle cell move your arms. But in the cytoskeleton, the protein present is the actin. It's not the myosin. The actin is it's actually all over the body. And if you're a protein, what organelle makes you if you're a protein? It's the R1. Which one is that? Any protein, all proteins, every protein is made by the ribosome. But who tells the ribosome what kind to make? Nucleus. The nucleus, more more than that, the DNA in the nucleus. Okay. Um, the phospholipid bilayer that you that we talked about, the solid skeleton. Don't your bones move your arm really? I know my muscles do. If you break a bone, you're gonna be moving around, you're gonna be walking if you break a leg. Or if you pull a muscle, you're gonna be walking. In our body, movement depends on two things, your muscles and your bones. But in, a, in, in this thing here, have you ever thought, how, how big is a fly? A little, right? Those wings move so fast. Have you ever thought about how the muscle inside his chest are arranged to make him move that fast? There's, there's, two, there's two mechanisms of movement, and you got the muscles, and, and, they're, and they work. And how is it that you rarely get a fly by doing that? But a fly swatter can. You know what the fly feels? Yeah. Air pressure. If my hand is full like this, and I can press the air, will that fly feel that? Mm -hmm. You look at a fly under his coat, it's got hairs on his body. His hairs are his sensors. Now, a fly swatter reduces the air pressure, and you get that something. And that's why the fly swatter is not flat like a spatula that you clip the pancake with. What if you open your finger? Huh? What if you open your finger? Your palm's still going to do the rest of it. 
Hot. Intermediate fibers hold one cell to another cell. Your skin. They're all, those, those cells are all hooked together to each other by intermediate fibers. That make your hair tough. And, and you know, hair and nails are really tough compared to your skin. Actually, the same stuff right here is right there. It's got more character. Character is a protein that makes your nails very hard and very tough. And you can you know, pick things with them. Um, the way the microtubules work, they're, they're arranged in pairs. Now, you, the central is three at a time, right? But these things are two at a time. And what's the only human cell okay. which has a flagellum? Sperm. Like, like a tadpole, right? That, that, fla that flagellum has these rods inside it, and the rods can bend. If the rods bend, what the tail do? And it's up a swim. You ever see a crankfish move real fast from danger? Does he run forward or does he back up? They back up. When a crankfish is alarmed, that big old tail whips this way, he backs up. He doesn't run away, he backs away. Well, well on the case of a sperm, he goes head first because on his head there's a little sack, a little sack for an enzyme. And when that, and when that, it's like a torpedo hit the ship. When that sperm hits that egg, problem is though, one sperm ain't got enough enzyme to get in the egg. It takes about a million to make enough enzyme for one to get in. That's why a low sperm count can make a man sterile. If he's making if he's making a thousand sperm, he will not have a baby. Takes more sperm than that to let one get in. So a low sperm count is as uh, bad as no sperm count. It takes millions of sperm together producing their enzyme to let one get in the egg. A lot of folks think that if a man makes one, he's good to go. A lot of one finds the egg. Huh? He might find the egg still. He needs his, he needs his. 999 billion brothers to also help him get in. So, but right here you see these are dynein arms and they're made of proteins and they can make and they can twist, they can bend that. And the dynein arms are what bends those those fibers inside. When the fiber bends, the flagella bends, and that's how the thing moves. Of course, now it takes ATP. They don't move on the own. It takes, it takes ATP to make them happen. But the dynein arms, that is, that is the protein that bends those filaments, which in turn moves the... And the cilia work the same way. They're just not as long. The flagellum is real long. The cilia is real short. This is a cytoskeleton. And all these... All these rods you see in here, those are the intermediate fibers. Now this thing here, there's a there's a ribosome with his outer membrane and his inner membrane. Um, the ribosomes, a lot of them are associated with the joints. They're making the proteins which make more of the cytoskeleton. So I mean, when, when, you, when, you pour, when you pour concrete for a driveway, don't you put wire inside it first? Yeah. Well, dust your wire inside the cell. Because their concrete will not hold itself up. And I got corners on my driveway breaking right now. And the wire there. The wire can bend but not stretch. And if they put enough wire in that concrete and then pull the concrete, it won't crack on you later on. Now, I didn't build my house. I bought it built. I've been there and I saw them pull it. I said, oh, I need some more wire right here. And you need more wire in the corners. In the middle, you're fine. It's in the corner. And it, does ground not shift? And the ground shifts, you'll find your concrete getting a crack. And then it rains. And then it freezes. 
And what's water do when it freezes? Get bigger or smaller? It's like a little pry bar. And the crack gets bigger. And as years roll by, water freeze, and that crack goes from a little crack to big crack. Next thing you know, the corner of the driveway is off. You drive across it, you push that side down more, and you say you driveway on the corners, you have no support on it. And I thought one day about calling my head and say, bust my driveway up and pull me a new one. And make sure I want to spend that kind of money. I still drive in until I get stuck in my yard. One day I might, but right now I'm stingy. <laughs> There's more pictures. I'm just showing you more pictures of, of the framework inside the cell. I mean, it's just, a lot of folks thought it was just a bunch of goo floating around. No, there's structure inside there. There's structure. And their names of a microfilament. Okay, there are filaments and then there are microfilaments. In your areola tissue that, that's your glue, there are filaments between the cells. And inside the cells, there are even littler filaments that we call microfilaments. If you're inside a cell, we call you micro something or another. If you're outside the cell and you're, and you're between the cells, like in your body, we call you a filament. And your body is, is collagen, which gives you your toughness. You ever try to tear skin with splinter and get splinter, but the skin a little bigger, the harder to tear that skin? The skin's extremely tough. So the paper can cut it before you know it. And nothing's sore in a paper cut. That's maybe a cut from a duca plant. Um, microtubules. Now these things, they resemble a whole lot. The, the three and the three and the three and the three and the three made by the centrioles. And we're going to mention the globular proteins and the tubulins in a minute. Okay? They're your straps. They hold things together. When you, when, you, when you haul something on a trailer, you always strap it down. And these are straps that strap you down. They also maintain the shape of the... And, oh, inside your cell, things are moving. Things are moving. They're not, just, they're not solid like jello. Those organelles are moving. The mitochondria are moving around. The question we have is, what makes the stuff move? If, if, if you stir tea, your spoon did it, right? Didn't just move by itself. Well, I'm not sure what's making I know it's moving, though. It's like tea is spinning, magically spinning. We know the stuff is moving. And when you cut the cell open, you always kill the cell. And then things are locked in place. That's how it not was. not how it was a moment ago before you cut the cell. Things are moving. These are, now if you look carefully, you'll find there's 13. And you have different ways to stack it. There's always 13. Now, here they are again. Now, this is the one I showed you in the dining arms that's making the the flagella All right. And the center, and there it is. And it's always in pairs. Two, 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 two. And on one side, you see that fan right there? You see that fan right there? They're always on the same side. But there's the fan. That's the next thing you're looking at. There's there's an A tubule and a B tubule. The A one has the nexus. Well, these are the dining arms. If, if these shrink and that gets shorter, it's going to bend it that way. And the way they, the way they shorten gives you that flipping, but they all can't shorten at the same time, can they? Some of them shorten, some don't. And that gives you the whipping sensation. And that's the most amazing thing because a sperm doesn't know where the egg lives. No more than a salmon knows where he's got to go lay his eggs. Salmon goes by chemical content. We think these do also. 
They'll travel blind and actually find the egg. Um, nothing there is not too obvious. Uh, flagella and centrioles are the ones who have the microtubules. And those pairs, do they share some of the, um, see how they're clumped together? The pair right here? Yeah. Well, share what? Like that wall? Are they just that smushed together? Right yeah. This? No, no, no. The, um, where, where the two meet. I mean, right there? Right. Are they sharing some of those little parts or? Well, actually, they are. See how they come together? Mm -hmm. see, see, this one, one of these is one of those. If I had two of these side by side, I'd have, see, this, there's two of those. This one could be that one, or this one could be that one. So, my actual photograph is showing two of these actual needles. The whole thing's an accident. And this thing runs the length of the flagella. And as they contract one side only, you get that swimming motion. That'll make them propel. Now, inclusions are, you all, they look like just specks of dust. And they're not alive. They're usually some kind of food, but they're being saved for a rainy day. They have no membrane around them. They're just a chunk of cornbread without a bag. And if you have a vacuole, you put the cornbread in a bag. But these inclusions, you get cornbread, but no bag, it's just the cornbread. That's an inclusion. It's not a lie, of course. And it's food. I mean, I mean, uh, when I was young, I've been known to take a biscuit from mom and grandma's house, put it in my pocket. <laughs> grandma said, "Put that thing for you first. Put in your pocket." Well, I just didn't put the biscuit in my pocket. I would have. The, I would do the inclusion. Grandma would do the, the vacuum. She would take that thing and wrap it in saran wrap. And, Here, take this. Well, I'm too lazy to do that, so I got to wrap it. Then eat it. Well, I do it to my pocket out. I, mean, I, was, I don't do it now, of course, I know better. But as a youngster, I mean, somebody made the best business in the world. And I just, and how'd it go? My brother would too. I'm like, I don't, don't think daddy did. But grandma would always say, boy, let me wrap it up for you. Said, no, grandma, then I gotta find a place to throw away this one on the ground. So I'm doing the inclusion when I put that biscuit in my pocket with nothing around it. My grandma would go, I've got to wrap that thing in foil or something for you. That would be the vacuum. Same stuff though, right? Okay. Um, good way to store stuff, inclusion. Those, um, you know, when you did your, chrom your chromatography and the pigments climb, uh, th th those are inclusions. They're not alive. They're not in a bag. They're just, some are red and some are yellow and some are orange. Those are inclusions. A virus can also get inside you. And if you have the bumps come up, and those are viruses that you will have the day you die. Herpes. It's one kind of herpes, and not the bad kind. There's two kinds of herpes. But usually stress will make them break out. Um, before a test, you might get them. Christmas time is bad because they don't know what to get the loved one and they stress over it. I don't stress over it. I get for my brother what I would like to have for me. So I give him a knife. I won't buy him a tie because I don't want a tie. But I mean, now, if I know he has a hobby, like I have a hobby that I know I like the rubber, I do reach on my track. And I use in, and I, my brother says, um, you still do an in scale? I know what he's asking for. You can buy me that. And that's why I buy, that's fine. And they don't cost very much, and he's concerned about, it. 
don't care about the cost. I mean, it's like if I give you a knife that costs 25 bucks, but don't give me four cars equal 25 bucks. He would do that. He wants to go equal, right? Mm -hmm. All folks do that though. They want to one up you. I just get what I'm going to give it to them. I don't care about the cost. All right. I, don't, I want my wife, I want to buy her a new sewing machine. But she won't give me what she wants. Because she knows what she does, I'm going to buy that stuff. She had one she uses and one of her mama had. Old fashioned kind. She said, honey, let me get you one that does buttonholes for you and will cook the dinner for you too. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want that. I'm going, crap. Now I got to buy her a pair of gloves again like I always do. <laughs> Give us some accessories with that sewing stuff. I don't know what to get her, because my luck, I'd buy something that didn't fit that machine. You can get her some fabric or something. I thought I'd get some camouflage and she'd make me a shirt. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I look around the house and what she, but like me, the things she needs, she buys. So, and so I thought about getting her a prescription to a magazine. I don't know what kind of magazine she, she reads, because she has all she wants. So I get stressed out. I want to give her something nice. I don't know what to give her. And she won't tell me what she wants. I want either though, because my mind says, I got too much money out. That's selfish to say I want to do transformers. Alright. Chloroplast. They're green. You saw some last time in the lab, the little brown circles. Brown because those things are, have been deadened and put in the scope. But um, that's where you find those pigments. That's where you find the pigments. And they're in charge of making food for the plant. And it's done through a thing called photosynthesis. Um, and you know a plant uses sunlight or the lamp in your kitchen. You can put a plant in your closet with the light on. As long as you water it, it'll survive right there. Turn the light off and it'll die there. But even your closet, the light, uh, yeah, the, the African violets do great under artificial light. So you don't need sunlight, you need light. And you got to water it, of course, because the water is going to be used to make the food. And you can't put water on the leaf. It's got to go in the ground because the water the leaf needs comes into the roots. So just because you moist, you squirt the leaves, you say, I'm watering this thing. No, you're not either. You want the water to drip onto the ground. <laughs> then the roots will pick it up and take it up to the leaves. And a lot of folks, they, they'll mist. And that does the leaf no good. It might make you feel better. And the carbon dioxide that you breathe out, He's using both of those two, the carbon and the oxygen. All he needs is hydrogen to make sugar. Because sugar is C6H12O6. He's getting the carbon and oxygen right there. The water you give that sucker, what's water made of? He splits that stuff, throws away the oxygen, and that hydrogen, that's what he combines with those two, the C and the D, to make the, um, the food. Oxygen that he releases came from the water he split. And get this, when he splits the water, he makes energy. Why can't we make a car to split water to make the energy to work my pistons and make me down the road? We can. It's not profitable. We had one, and the old company bought the, um, the blueprint and shelved it. You know why they shelved it? <laughs> they go to they go to business. Uh, Exxon, one of them, uh, and I read it back. It must have been back in the seventies, where a man actually had a machine that would split water and would make a little light bulb go. That'd be free, wouldn't it? I don't recall how he split the water, but the, when I read it, he was told by the gas company. We'll pay you right now a cool five million dollars for your plan. In the seventies, with one condition, you never tell anybody how you did it. You never discuss anything about it. You forget you did it. He did, they did, and we don't have it. 
And gas now is what, three dollars something cent a gallon? That's why. Uh, I guess if you want to make some million, do the same thing. We know plants do it. They do it all. Plants do it all the time. They split water, and they get the energy necessary to make their food. We know it to be done. But the problem is though, if it costs me ten dollars to do that, and I make five bucks, what kind of deal is that? <laughs> I'm out five. So so far, that's the problem. The ones who can do it. It costs them more to do it than they make off of it. Are you going to make a cupcake that costs you $10 and then sell it for a nickel? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the problem. i got to sell it. And who's going to pay you 10 bucks for a cupcake anyway? I ain't going to pay you 10 bucks for it. It's got to be reasonable. It's got to be where you can make a living off of it and right now. And uh, they told this guy, this may never work in real life. We're taking a chance at might. Now, you want to take the deal now, or do you want to keep working and fall flat in your face? And then, well, what would you do? Take the money. I'm taking the deal also. Mm -hmm. Take it and run because there's no guarantee that when you get down to making a car motor, it's going to work again. The most type of thing. But apparently, the oil company was scared enough to make the offer. Mm -hmm. What? That's been you can look it up. Now. So, uh, so they split the hydrogen from the oxygen? All they would do is split the hydrogen and what they say so their energy holds us together, right? When you release them, out comes the energy. That can be used to make the wheels burn. And well, we know that it can make a light bulb burn. Are they not electric cars? And that see, it was not gonna be it's gonna be an electric car you made. I would take and split the water and use the energy to make the electricity. That will in turn drop you down the road. These big old freight trains you see, the ones that, that, that power up real slow, those are big diesel motors making electricity. And electricity runs those, those drive wheels. They're, 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 the only pistons you see are in those motors. They're big generators. That's why they start real slow, and they go forward as fast as they go backwards. And you see them hooked up, facing different directions, right? An electric motor can spin both ways. Now my car can't back up fast, I go forward, can it? Well, a big old diesel motor, or these big trains you see, they'd be pointing different directions going licky split because they're electric. All that, all the diesel fuel does is run the diesel motor that makes electricity. Well, if you could take water in there and split the water, you got to go buy no more diesel fuel. Exxon have fit, then they? So they got money coming in because you buy the diesel fuel. So, so if you want, if, if you want to make yourself a quick million, learn how to do that artificially. How would you um, keep the hydrogen stable? I don't know. I do not give me that. <laughs> I mean. But all these, and I don't know if that guy's plan would ever work. But I would have taken the money and run also. But it may, it may have worked in the long run. Yeah. But the old company, they saw something there and scared us. And they may have wasted But what's five million to an oil company? Nothing. It's like a nickel to me. I throw a nickel away no time. Okay? Now, In a, in, a, in a cell, there are membranes, and these things are not part of the membrane. They're, they're called plastids, chloroplast, plastid. Um, they're basically storage. The chloroplast makes the food and stores it. And when, you're, when you plant your little peas in the spring, and the question is, that seed is underground, right? Can light shine on that seed? And how does it grow? The heat. The heat of the ground. Well, the heat of the sun touching the ground. Like well, well, also, is there or is not enough food already stored in that seed? Yes. There's enough food there to get it out of the ground. And then the little green leaves come out. Then what happens? He starts making food then. But if you plant them too deep, he comes up, the leaves form, he's still underground, will he survive? 
That's why some plants you plant on the top of the ground, some you push in a little bit with a light covering, some you go deep. Your bubbles go deep. Because bubbles big old thing up. And when you eat black eyed peas, what you're getting is called a stored, it's called endosperm. It's a stored food that you get. And that if you plant it too deep, it goes through its life cycle, sends out the leaves, and it's still in the ground. Oh crap, I can't get the sun. And that one dies. If you plant them just right, when it breaks the ground and the leaves open up, the sun shines. Hey, now he makes more food, make more roots. But when you when you have a seed, there's just enough food stored there to let him erupt from the ground, and then the leaves would take over and make the rest of it. And how deep you plant that seed is going to determine whether or not. Now my grandma always told me, soak the seeds before you plant them, and they'll come up faster. I did a lab in college on that very thing, and they did come up. I took some of um, them. They were um, they were lima beans. I soaked them for 24 hours. I put them all in the same place. And these were lima soaked. These were not. And all of these broke the ground and were growing before these came up. And apparently there's something the water activates it. And then she also says, Bobby, always plant your garden so it gets morning sunlight. Morning sunlight is more valuable than evening sunlight. I went, I thought sunlight, sunlight. Yeah. But I took in college and I, 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 I put me a petition up, like face the sun. I put these on this side and these on that side. These got the morning sunlight. These got both sunlight and then in the evening, keep it shaded, right? That's a degree faster. Grandma had no degree in college. Didn't even finish school, but she had smarts, but she had she could grow anything. She had a green thumb, no doubt about it. But she never learned to drive a car. Because Granny had told her you couldn't drive a car. Granny bought my grandma around. Come on, women rights? Not in that house or what? Not at all. Alright? They have chlorophyll. Now, now, I want to show you a picture in a minute, but they have they have thylakoid membranes inside the chloroplast. I mean, inside the cell. Inside the chloroplast are the membranes. The membranes is what we used to find the photosynthesis happening. Remember the mitochondrion had membranes? And on the membranes we find respiration happening? Well, they're very similar. The chloroplast has membranes inside. Now we call the mitochondrial membranes cristae. These are called thylakoids. The cristae do respiration and give energy to you. The thylakoids take sunlight, and they make food for the plant. The energy comes from the splitting of water. The plants, they, they live different. Now, the chloroplast, they can move around. They're not glued down in place like, like fruit and jello. They can move. And the mitochondria, of course, they're moving. And they're moving along with the railroad track laid down by this time of skeleton. It's like overhead system in a factory that moves things back and forth. Well, your cells, cells, your cells are very organized when you think they are. They're not just things stoned in there. They're an organization. Um, the insides are in compartments. They're partitioned. And then there's a, there's a narrow space between one compartment and another one. And the name is very good. It's called the intermembrane space. And you want to see a picture in a minute of the thylakoids and another thing called the stroma. Now you ain't got stroma yet, but it's coming up. Alright. <clears throat> All the green. Alright. This, okay, first off, this whole thing is a chloroplast. It's got two membranes. It's got this membrane. An intermembrane space and this membrane. And again, we think that when when this bacterium got to a cell, this was the old cell membrane. This was the original bacterial membrane that contained this stuff. This is what was trapped between 
the host cell and the invading bacteria. <coughs> the yellow area is called the stroma. Don't get stroma and stoma confused. Stoma are those openings in a cell that lets air go back and forth. Stroma are stroma that is the liquid area inside a chloroplast. The thylakoids are the membranes inside. And there's, there's three right there. Now, this whole stack is called a gram. One, two, three. This granum contains five thylakoids. This granum contains two thylakoids. This granum contains five. And they will show you it's even hollow inside there. There's a lumen. Mm -hmm. Any hollow area is called a lumen inside. So, it's on this surface, just a surface, that food is being manufactured. The light shines right through here. And when I talk about photosynthesis next quarter, you're going to see in much more detail there's there's a light reactions and a dark reactions. And in the light reactions, there are actually two photosystems working. And it's, it's so cool that in a factory, let's say that I am going to make pancakes. One part of the factory makes the batter. Sends that to me, and I make the pancake. Well, that's your two photosystems. One system is making the raw ingredients, and the other system is putting them together. Um, photosynthesis to me is the most amazing thing. When I when I finally got to understand it, I'm going, God, that's cool. And that's evolution. You think it evolved that way, or somebody built that sucker? And I have a real problem with evolution. And you tell me that that wasn't put there at one time. Uh, I know that you might find this evolved to another one, but who made the first one? The prototype. All the cars out here, where was, who made the first car? It wasn't here before either. I mean, somewhere there is a car that someone made for the first time ever, and all these cars you see here evolved from that one. Me. But the first one was it not made? So I'm I'm tired of creation. And I mean we got Fords, we got Chevys, we got Porsches. Do not do they not all have the same ancestor though? Sure they do. But the ancestor, where he evolved from, or was he created? So I mix them both together. In my mind, the first one was created. And all the rest of them evolve. evolve. I'll tie it together. I got no problem with that either in my mind. It works perfectly to me. Alright. This is a picture. Now, this is this is a cell wall. And these are the chloroplasts. And inside of these you find the thylakoids. And notice that they're why are these things always on the edge and not in the middle? What is they want to get the light. Yeah. I'm going to find light by the window, right? Not in the middle of it. And even the ones you saw in the lab upstairs, those are also, and they weren't pretty green like this. They, they, they didn't turn into brown. But that's a, now you want, uh, animal cell has nothing like this at all. Nothing like that at all. And those chloroplasts, that's moss. Moss is pretty and green. And moss also grows very small. Moss is a non-vascular plant. There are no veins in a moss. I mean, the, the, you saw the leaves and you all the veins doing palmate and pinnate in a moss. Nothing. It's just a leaf. And because it diffuses, it can't be a big leaf. You find all mosses are little bitty leaves. Because diffusion is how they get the nourishment. That's all of that one. 